Um, good, afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Thad White. I am the technical marketing group for BMC Software, and I am the host for this meeting. Uh, this particular meeting is part of our best practices webinar series that we host uh, every couple of weeks. You can register for upcoming uh, events in the communities, and you can also look at recordings from past best practices webinars. Uh, on the same page and look at those recordings as well. Today's uh, best practice is going to be heartbeat monitoring and true site operations management. Your presenter is Martin Tauber, and we have a backup of Mike Ashell to answer questions in the Q&A window. Uh, as always, uh, submit your questions as they, and we will answer them uh, if we can. If we can't, we'll take them uh, away and we'll get back to you uh, with an answer on it. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to, to Martin. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Martin Tauber. I'm a lead product developer at BMC Software. And today I want to talk about um, heartbeat monitoring. Okay, so what are we going to see today in, in, in this presentation? Well, um, I wanted to focus basically on two things here. The first thing is that um, I've been doing lots of implementations of, of TrueSight and especially TrueSight event management, and one problem or one um, situation we often run into is that we want to be aware of sources uh, that should be sending events but suddenly stop sending events. Yeah. So that is a very common problem um, that we have to solve, and I just wanted to talk about that today. Yeah. So the problem is basically we're sending events, something is, goes wrong. Yeah, we would be expecting events. Everything looks nice in, in TrueSight, but um, since the sources are off, maybe everything is going to be in a mess. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is um, give you some kind of first introductions or some introductions into some best practices on writing MRL rules with this example of how to do event handling. So um, if you have questions, don't hesitate. You can ask questions anytime. Okay. What am I going to show? Well, basically, I already mentioned that a little bit. I'm going to show how to do heartbeat monitor, how to do heartbeat handling in um, in ML, yeah. I'm going to give you some basic um, concepts like rules, tables, and records, and why to use them, what, um, how to use them. Um, so these are also some basic things that you might learn, or, but that is a high-level overview. We're going to see lots of code here, by the way, yeah. And the last thing that I'm going to take a look at is, well, heartbeat monitors, but somehow we also have to create these heartbeats that we need to monitor. And heartbeat monitoring also has some pitfalls that we have to just take a closer look at, because um, if you don't do it properly, you can run into some trouble. Okay. Handling events in true side. So, the, um, how we're going to handle these events, basically the concept is that um, we're going to define some events that we are going to say these are the heartbeat events. Yeah? So we want to have the sources um, sending heartbeat events, and we will take a look at that later on, kind of sources we have, who can send heartbeat events, how we can trigger heartbeat events. Um, and when a heartbeat event arrives, we want to register these events that they um, they have occurred, and basically for that we created a table with two entries, one the origin and one the last heartbeat. And the origin basically stores the um, origin of the heartbeat, which could be, for instance, a host, but it could also be like the SNMP adapter or the third-party tool that uh, does event integration, whatever, yeah? and it's heartbeats. Um, and the last heartbeat is basically the time that we saw the last heartbeat. So every time an event, a heartbeat event occurs, it's going to either create a record into this heartbeat table, yeah, or it's going to update um, a record if it exists. Of course, 
the origin must be unique to, um, for this heartbeat that we want to monitor. Okay. Um, the other concept that we have um, within MRL is the concept of a record. And you can think of a record basically being uh, like a global variable or a global picture or a single line table, however you want it. And we often use these records to configure um, the MRL rules that we, that we are writing. It's a nice way to make them very dynamic. And in our case, we're going to use this heartbeat record that you see down here um, to configure um, time when we expect the heartbeat to occur. Now, so we're getting a heartbeat and we're saying, well, within 20 minutes, the heartbeat should occur or else I am going to raise an event saying, oh, I think the source is lost since there is no heartbeat. Um, you see down here in the heartbeat record, we also have um, like another configuration variable, which is called every tick. And um, just keep that in mind um, that we have this configuration variable. Um, we're going to see why we need that later on. Okay, so that is basically the first part of the algorithm. We get the event, we write it into the table. Um, we get the event, we update the table, and the second part would be that we have some kind of uh, mechanism that goes through the table, compares um, the last heartbeat, the current time, and the time window, and sees if we got an event within that time window. If we didn't, we're going to raise an event, making sure that uh, people are alerted, else we'll just continue. The first step we have to do is maintain our heartbeat table. Yeah. So as I said, it basically has two entries, and I wonder if I've got like a laser pointer here that I can point a little bit around. Yeah. Um, so the first thing we, we create is a new, a new, new rule, yeah, which has a name. In our case, it's the heartbeat update, um, which triggers on a certain event. In our case, it is event. Sometimes we have done these implementations that we create special heartbeat events. Yeah. If you do that, you have to often um, make sure that you first have some kind of normalization of the events, saying like, oh, this is a heartbeat event. I'm not going to create my heartbeat event that this rule is going to trigger on. Yeah. I kept it simple here. I just said like, well, it has to be of type event. And um, if we look at the message here, if in the message we have the text agent heartbeat, we consider it to be a heartbeat event. Okay, so this is when this rule triggers. It says like we got this event in the message it's agent heartbeat, and now we're going to um, compare it against our entries in the, um, in the heartbeat table, and this is what the using clause does. It says like we're going to look into the heartbeat table, we're going to check if the host, in this case, is equal to the origin, then we already have an entry. And uh, if we have that entry, we are going to just say, okay, last heartbeat is the current timestamp. Uh, that this rule basically maintains all the um, all the entries within the heartbeat table that already have an entry, uh, which is fine. So one thing to mention here, and I think that is something um, some people often or people have often have to get their head around that we don't have we have don't have the concept of saying like in this rule we're going to maintain updates and inserts. Yeah, we we're going to have one rule for the updates. Yeah, and we're going to have one rule for the inserts into that table. Okay, so we found the entry. Um, and um, we uh, set the last heartbeat time, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the original heartbeat event, and basically the processing of that heartbeat event stops here. Yeah. Um, if we didn't find an entry in the heartbeat table, yeah. Oops. Go back. If we didn't find an entry in the heartbeat table, sorry about that, wrong here. Um, 
the event processing continues. Yeah, our event is still there. We're going to hit the new rule for the heartbeat inset. And um, the heartbeat inset is just going to say, obviously, the first rule didn't trigger, so we don't have an entry within that um, table. So we're going to say the message is going, uh, we're going to see that this heartbeat event is coming in, and we're just going to say, like, okay, create a new data entry in the heartbeat table with the origin and the last timestamp, and again, we're going to drop the, the heartbeat event. Okay, these are the two rules necessary to, um, to maintain the heartbeat table. Um, that's basically it for maintaining the heartbeat table. Um, now we somehow have to make sure that we trigger from time to time, trigger, um, look into that table and check if we are missing any events. And for this, um, I want to do this little excursus about Celtics. Normally, um, events um, are sent to the cell and processed there, but there we also have some internal events that we can, can um, trigger from within the cell. They don't come from the outside, they are just triggered within the cell um, itself, yeah, and one of them is the cell tick. So in the mcell.conf, either in the etc directory or in the cell directory uh, or the kb directory, um, in the mcell.conf, you can um, switch on and switch off the cell event um, tick table. So you would have to um, switch on the cell tick yeah, with a yes, and you would have to set the cell tick interval, which is default by 10 minutes. And if you have done that, um, the cell will generate an internal event, and I put the definition of that cell tick event um, here in that slide every 10 minutes. Now that's important for our heartbeat mechanism because now we can use this cell tick event um, to um, to uh, hook in and trigger our um, mechanism, our algorithm to find out if we have any missing events. Yeah? Um, this is a nice trick to do, and often people will ask, why are we not using timers um, to do that? Um, the advantage of using the cell tick event in this scenario is that usually we are going to have lots of heartbeats, yeah? and um, the timers would create a bigger overhead in the cell and reduce performance of the cell than using that little trick of using the MC cell tick waiting for that internal event. Okay, so to do that, we have to change the M cell conf, set the appropriate parameters, and then we'll see that cell tick event in our cell. And then we can um, start doing the heartbeat um, um, algorithm. Okay. I have put a little step in between, and I think that is also one of the best practices I wanted to show within the heartbeat handling in here, saying that, well, we have configured the um, cell tick event to run every 10 minutes here, um, but maybe we don't want to, um, to run that algorithm every 10 minutes. Yeah, sometimes we see that we are using that cell tick not only for heartbeats, but for other mechanisms as well. So maybe we're going to tr trigger it every minute or something like that, and we don't want the, the algorithm to trigger every minute. So we would skip certain cell tick events before we trigger the heartbeat mechanism. Yeah, and this is what this rule um, basically does. It says, well, okay, it's again a new rule. I'll use the laser pointer, it's got a name, and it triggers on the MC cell tick. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to just say, well, we're going to have a counter, add one increment that counter, and if that counter reaches our every tick limit, then we're going to set it to zero. Yeah? Basically, a modulo for, um, from the every tick. And remember, that was not the configuration parameter that I showed you um, at the beginning. We have the interval and the every tick configuration parameter for our heartbeat 
Um, um, so this basically says, well, we're counting that parameter, and in the next rule we'll see we're only going to trigger that heartbeat algorithm to check if we are running out of the intervals for um, when the heartbeat tick is zero. Okay, so nice trick to not trigger on every cell tick event. Yeah, um, be able to configure that, make it more flexible. Okay, so here is the, the rule, the check for the missing heartbeats. Actually, what we want to do is uh, we again have the new rule, um, a heartbeat checker. She's missing there in the heartbeat anyway, but it will run anyway since the name doesn't really matter. It triggers on the cell tick, and there we have the clause where heartbeat tick equals to zero, so it won't um, trigger on every cell tick, only if we receive a cell tick and our configuration parameter heartbeat tick is zero. And it's going to say using all heartbeat data. Yeah? And the important thing here is to mention is that we have here the using all clause, which basically means we are looking at all the entries within the heartbeat. Um, table, and for every entry within the heartbeat table, we're going to run that piece of code, which is here um, in the triggers clause. Yeah. And that also is, again, very simple or very basic. Yeah, we're just going to check if the current time minus the timeout is bigger than the last heartbeat, then obviously we haven't seen that heartbeat for the timeout value. Yeah, and then we're going to generate a new event saying, okay, we're missing a heartbeat from that source. Yeah. And this is how you would implement the heartbeat um, from uh, within MIL. Okay, I'll pause for a second. Any questions so far? I hope it was not too fast. Yeah. Um, just to, to summarize that once again, we have the table, which keeps track of the heartbeats. We have the record, which basically does the configuration for the heartbeat mechanism. Yeah. We had to write two rules to um, maintain the heartbeat table, one for the update of the table and one for the inset of the table. Yeah. And there it is important that the update runs before the insert because we first have to check do we already have an entry, then we're going to update it. If we don't have an entry, then we are going to insert it. Yeah. We had that one rule that might have confused you a little bit, but basically says, well, we don't want to trigger on every cell tick. The cell tick was the event that was triggered every time um, uh, in a certain interval within the cell. And we had the last rule, which basically does the checking of the heartbeat table and creating an event if something is in heartbeat is missing. Okay. One thing to mention here is um, the, this algorithm maintains the heartbeat table in the sense of it inserts new records and it updates, but it doesn't delete any records. So in case sources are removed, yeah, we would have to think about a mechanism on um, how we would remove these tables, uh, these entries within the table to not create false alarms. Uh, but that is often very customer specific. Okay. I'll pause again for two or three seconds. And then I'm going to move on. Martin, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, so, People are having trouble unmuting themselves, so I will I will unmute everyone's line here at, at the end. Uh, I don't want to do it right now because it could be a disaster. Uh, but at the end, I will unmute everyone's line. I'd also like to remind everyone that if you have a question, please use the Q and A window uh, in the WebEx window. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, so we talked about how to, to handle the heartbeats within TrueSide. The other problem we often face is how to generate heartbeats. Yeah? So 
we have products that um, create their own heartbeats. So that, so that is very nice. If we have that, then we just can use the existing heartbeats. If they send events in a regular interval, um, then we can use them. Yeah. Um, if we don't have that, it might get a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Sometimes we are trying to be a little bit tricky here, and we try to force events on a regular interval. Yeah. A common technique that um, we use at customer sites is, for instance, at SN, with SNMP events causing authentication failures. Uh, having somebody to try to access an SNMP device with the wrong credentials yeah, will cause an authentication failure. If you do that regularly, you somehow can um, force a heartbeat from, from these SNMP devices uh, to ensure that they are sending traps yeah, and that they can feed into um, the heartbeat mechanism I just um, commented on. Yeah. Um, another method of generating heartbeat um, events is well, using um, knowledge modules, basically saying like, okay, in PSL we can trigger events within the agent, and um, from that agent we can trigger events. Um, creating a heartbeat. So you could check something saying like, okay, it's okay, and we're regularly going to create these, these heartbeats. I'm going to have a, a small example for that later on as well. Um, the other method is, of course, not going through the agent, um, but using um, the msend command to generate heartbeat events. Yeah? Using a sense saying like, okay, heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. I know this this source is generating events. And of course, another way to generate heartbeat events would be to use an MRL, the generate event um, command within MRL. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Another use case or small use case I wanted to show you that I have implemented for for, for our customer is um, ensuring the data, the event flow between the patrol agent integration server and TSIM, and that basically just uses the event trigger, yeah? and uh, event trigger is a PSL command. So you, I wrote a small KM using that event trigger um, command to regularly send um, events to the integration server and then use the heartbeat mechanism to um, ensure that um, the heartbeat handling is done properly. Well, um, besides events, I once had the request that some customers ask me to do heartbeat on data streams, saying like we want to ensure that the data streams between the um, patrol agent and the integration server is working properly, um, and there instead of basically doing, um, triggering the event on the agent side, we would trigger the event on, on the server side yeah, and say like we are flipping a value back and forth from zero to one. And on the server side, we would generate a, uh, uh, an event in case of the, that the value is one. Yeah, and in the, if it's zero, this event is going to be closed again. And based on that event created on the server, we could feed that into the heartbeat mechanism to ensure that the data flow between the agent and um, the TSIM server is working properly. I've got five minutes. Um, having said that, there are some pitfalls on heartbeat monitoring. Well, First of all, heartbeat monitoring is not so free. We saw that the um, algorithm is quite simple. Uh, we say we're going to create, make, create an insert into that table, we're going to update that table, we're going to run through, through that table to find um, anything that is um, where we're missing heartbeats. Um, the major problem with the heartbeat mechanism is often that people underestimate um, the amount of heartbeat events that might occur. Yeah. So for example, if you have one heartbeat from 1,000 sources every second, that means you would have to process 1,000 events per second yeah, just to 
um, handle heartbeat monitoring. Yeah? That is something that you have to be very aware of. Yeah? So when you implement a heartbeat mechanism to really ensure that the cell is doing event processing and not only heartbeat handling, you should really ask yourself the questions, um, how often do I need to send the heartbeat? Uh, how, when, what is the interval that I can, um, I would accept, tolerate as um, not receiving events? Yeah? And which are the sources that need to send heartbeats? Uh, the um, example I showed um, just now was like showing the agent sending events to the integration server, to the TSIM server. To ensure the data flow, do you really need every agent? Or do, in this case, it's just enough to say like it, the um, heartbeat should be installed on one agent running on an integration server to ensure that flow. Okay. This is it from my side. It's three minutes to um, half past, um, so I'll open it for questions. Yeah, great. Thank you, Martin. Very good. I am going to unmute everyone. Uh, again, we have quite a few people on the line, so if you're if you're not going to be uh, asking a question, please put yourself on mute so that uh, we get rid of any background noise. Give me one second here, and I will unmute everyone's line. The presenter has allowed participants to unmute themselves. You can now unmute yourself by pressing star six. And you have a question that you should be able to unmute yourself at this point. So far, no questions. Uh, so there is a, a couple of questions uh, in the uh, in the Q&A, uh, yeah. uh, you got it, Ash, Mike, are you on? Yeah, yeah, I was just saying to Martin in the Q&A, there's a question from uh, Daryl, um, Martin. Mm -hmm. you, want, you see that? He says, uh, how does this test application, i.e. a syslog server, is processing syslog messages for, for the m to to TSOM, or is this the only testing path in the cell question mark? Sorry, I have to find, can, can you say that Darryl, again? Daryl, are you on the, do you want to unmute yourself? Are you available? Can you see the Q&A, Martin? Yeah, Martin, the question, can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> okay. The question is, how does this test the application, i.e. syslog server, is, is processing syslog messages for the MSEN to TSOM, or is this only testing the path and the cell? And I think that's the question. So in this the is only there. testing. Yeah. So um, Go ahead. I think that it is a good question because it um, opens some creativity on creating events. Um, the the algorithm is only on the cell, so you have to somehow get the events to the cell. Yeah. So if, you, for instance, would like to test the syslog, yeah, you could, for example, have um, a source writing into the syslog informational events regular, on a regular basis to ensure that these syslog events arrive through the normal mechanisms within the cell and the cell heartbeat method or the, the algorithm that I just checked now would then trigger to um, to check if the, um, we receive syslog messages. Yeah? So it's, it's a good example for being creative on how to generate events. Yeah? We have syslog, we've connected syslog to our cell environment. We expect syslog events to appear in that environment. Normally nobody, or it could be that nobody writes into it. Now we don't see anything, but it could be broken. So if we regularly write to that syslog um, certain messages, we can reuse these messages, these defined messages, to um, um, feed our heartbeat mechanism here. Hope this helps. Excellent. Any other any other questions for Martin or Mike? Again, star six to unmute yourself or 
type it into the Q&A window. Okay, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you very much, Martin, for, for the content. That was excellent. Thank you, Mike, for being on the line and answering questions. Uh, this concludes this particular session, best practices session. Uh, if you want to see upcoming sessions again or older sessions, please go to the community's website and look for uh, TrueSight Operations Best Practices Calendar, and you can find uh, all the information there. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody.